Hey, Sal, how are you? Hey, Chris, how are you going? Hey. Good to see you. Yeah, it's great to have you back here. You've got a tiger with a toothache, huh? Yes, we've got a tiger with a toothache. She's knocked the top off her tooth and... Big tooth, big ache. Big tooth, big ache. She's got her three cubs still with her. I mean, the babies are actually bigger than mum now. One of the keepers noticed that when they fed her that she was a little bit tentative and wasn't too keen to eat. So they did some investigating and, yep, sure enough, she'd sheared her tooth off. So here she is down here. All right. That's her there. This is her here. Hey, Soraya. I think any problem with a Sumatran tiger is a big problem, but when you've got a problem with one of their biggest teeth, it becomes quite a challenge. Soraya, Soraya. Come, Baba. OK. Yes, you can't have anything to eat. She is going to be knocked down today, so I can't actually give her anything to eat. Yes, so sure. the others are all saying, feed me, feed me. <laughs> Hello, Bubbers. Good babies. Yeah, Aren't yeah. they beautiful babies? So she just hasn't been comfortable with the food? She just... has not been comfortable with the food, no. So, and also, if you don't fix it, then the problem's only going to get worse. So it does need to be fixed, and it, and it needs to be fixed now. Yeah. yeah. Soraya, there you see the tooth now? Yeah, see? Yeah, oh yeah. The whole thing yeah, sheared yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See that? Yeah. When you look inside Soraya's mouth, you can see that problem straight away. The top one third of her big canine tooth, her big fang, has just cracked right away. And that's exposed the darker bit in the middle, which is the nerve. That's an exposed nerve sitting right there. That's painful. She's going to be a real challenge to anaesthetise. Well, we never do it in the exhibit. We always put them into the night house. So you'll just go in, one dart, and then we pop out and we leave her yeah. to settle down because it is stressful for them. Mm. It isn't an easy procedure. Mm. I know dog yeah. and cat dentals, but this one's on another level, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't think she's going to go to the dentist chair willingly, but we'll give no. it a go. We'll give it a go. <laughs> OK, then okay. let's go up and let's get on give with it, it a go. The problem with Soraya's tooth is that when it's cracked through, it's exposed the pulp of the tooth, but also the nerve. So any time anything touches that tooth, it'd be excruciating for Soraya. So what she needs is two words that send a shiver down in one spine, a root canal. Um, when the animal goes down, the first two people and the only two people in um, until we're happy is Sam and myself, just until we're sure that, you know, she's nice and deep. Then if Chris can come through, Chris and Chalky together, um, Chalky will be responsible for the cargo net and you're responsible for the manacles. Yeah, we, we always find we plan for the worst. Trying to get a Sumatran tiger anaesthetised, trying to operate on that tooth in a very kind and humane way that really causes the, as little pain as possible. All while remembering that we don't want any pain inflicted upon us if she wakes up. This is hard. So I've worked out in advance that based on her estimated body weight the amount of metatomidine we need which is 0.3 of a mil. So we're using the 10 milligrams per mil which is the 10 Strong times stuff. concentration. Yeah. Yep, so you don't want to prick yourself with that. <laughs> uh, and then ketamine we're using um, it's special powder that they make up so we can double the concentration as well, just so we've got the right volume to go into the dart. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be 1.5 mil. All right, great. And then both of those just need to be injected into the top of the dart there. You just can't underestimate how important getting these dosages right is because this is essentially what is going to bring down Soraya and, and keep all of us safe and and really start off this whole procedure. So it's um it's pretty crucial. So this is just all of the emergency equipment in here. So if anything goes wrong up there, uh, more anaesthetic, um, but adrenaline, atropine, um, pyrazomide, all that sort of stuff, ET tubes, and an ambi bag. So if we needed to start breathing for us suddenly. Sure. Today always sounded like it was going to be a big day, but now you see this stuff here, you see Nadine here with all her gear. Yeah, it's starting to get very real. All done? Yes, ready to go. All right. We'll see you in a second, Nadine. Righto. With see a, you guys um, soon. With yeah. a tiger. The hope now is with Saray in the night den, we just give her some time just to settle down, relax, then we should be able to get a good shot with the dart gun. This is just charging the dart. Normally just check that that is fully pressurised with this very technical piece of wire. The scariest part of today is it's, it's the whole thing because at any stage Soraya can wake up 
And if she does that, we're that far away from the very, very pointy part of Soraya. So that anaesthetic needs to be right, it needs to be deep enough, and we need to make sure that she basically becomes pain free again. A lot of challenges along the way, and I don't know, you've got to be nervous. Yeah. Right, just looks really agitated. She's really pacing back and forth and doing figure eights. You're gonna find it really hard to get a dart into her like this. Sam's gonna aim for the top of the thigh, just in that back leg there. But she flashes it, then she turns away, so she's just not gonna get a clean shot. Um, Chalky, can you go in the other side? Yeah. Just try and distract her. It's just pacing there, is it the problem? Yeah, and I need her to be at right angles to the gun, obviously, so... So she obviously knows what's about to happen. Yeah. She's sensing that. <laughs> that was very hard. I mean, she was pacing back and forth, and when it hit her, she really jumped up, knowing that, that something had hit her, didn't really know what it was, but um, it's in. Now that we know the dart's actually hit her, it's gone in, it's injected the anaesthetic, we now have to stand back and just make sure she goes down, but also that she goes down deep enough that we can get in there. Um, calm now, yeah, I think she's starting to be yeah. effective, which is good. And she's dropped. Yeah, she's down there. It's obviously very critical that when you go in there, you know that she is asleep, because if she's not, she's going to give you uh, a fair surprise. So they're most sensitive, as you would know, around their nose and their ears and their eyes, so I'm just checking that she's got absolutely no reaction there. So she's very slightly light. We're just going to we'll give her another minute or two. She's just got a slight twitch there. Tigers are like people in one way. They don't go to the dentist willingly, so we have to bring the dentist to Soraya, and that's what we've done today. A whole lot of equipment, a whole lot of expertise, and hopefully we'll get the result. Yep, all right, let's go. Sally and all the team here really know their animals, and when they see that something's not quite right, they're just not being themselves, they're onto it. And that has really saved Soraya from what could have been a really serious problem here. At the moment, it's an issue, but it could have been a really life-threatening issue. We've not knocked her out here before, so I haven't intubated her before. Mm -hmm. Most adult tigers will take a size 16, yeah. um, but I have a 14 here just in case because yeah. she's quite small. Do you want a light source? Yeah, yeah well done. That's a good fit. She's not going to need much air. Do you want to tie that in? Not, you guys not like a moggy, huh? No. <laughs> so she's tube now. We're just now running some oxygen and anaesthetic gas into her. In that process, she does lighten up a little bit, so we now need to flood a system with anaesthetic gas again, get it deep, and then we can start. A cracked tooth is always a problem, but when it's attached to a Sumatran tiger, then what you're facing here is a pretty major challenge. So we've assembled a specialist team, including the Dean from SASH, who will be able to handle what is essentially a root canal on a tiger. Not easy. 66 pulse rate. Great. 
I'm just going to wait till these guys have her nice and deep, and then we'll uh, take a look at her mouth. You don't want to get in there too soon. <laughs> so we're just putting some lubricating ointment in her eyes so that her corneas don't dry out. It's going to be quite a long procedure. So she's got crown fracture, and it's complicated, which means that the pulp is exposed. So that's very, very painful. I think this is um, a tooth that's very much amenable to a root canal. The interesting thing is that what you're seeing here, the crown, so just this crown, is only about 40% of the whole tooth. The vast majority of the tooth is embedded in that jaw, so it's a pretty big deal with these guys. What's going on under the gum is just as important as what's above it. Mm -hmm. We've just been getting half glimpses up until now, but now we can actually see the full extent of the fracture. And that would be an extremely painful thing to go through and to try to live with, so it's a very good thing for Sarai that she's in here today. see here. Let's see what that gives us. Between all the anaesthetic gear, the, the darting, and then the little x-ray unit which can take these instant shots of Soraya's tooth to really give us a good idea about how deep this fracture is, whether there's any infection involved. This sort of stuff hopefully will mean all the difference for Soraya. So this is the root of the canine itself. This area here is all jaw. And if you can make out this black area right here, that's actually infection and inflammation in the jaw itself. We just want to make sure that the area we're working in is as clean as possible. Right. Cool. Let the fun begin. What we'll be doing is going inside the tooth itself with some files and basically scraping the inside out, getting all that nasty muck, the infection, all out of there. Once that's all clean and done, what we'll do is we'll fill it up with a material that is like a plastic and doesn't really support bacterial life, so it doesn't allow an infection to really set up in there. Once all that's done, we seal it off and off she goes, and hopefully she won't have an infection in her jaw anymore. This is lubricating agent, and that just allows us to get right in there and just open up the canal a bit. What we need to do now is hopefully find out just how long Surya's tooth actually is. Okay, so this is a time when we need to take another x-ray. Sweet. It's pretty loose, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we might try her down on two and a quarter. I think she's relatively stable. She's just giving me a little bit of grief in her breathing. She's breathing a bit more rapidly than lions and tigers normally do and a little bit more erratically than I would like. So yeah, I'm just counting down the minutes. I want her back on the stretcher and back in her den as soon as possible. So I'm hurrying Nadine along a little bit. <laughs> her canal is a spectacular seven centimetres. Wow. That's huge. That means there's that much tooth sitting beneath. So yep, it goes that's exactly up. right. Crazy stuff. Oh, so you can see all this black muck that's coming out. That's all the infected, unhappy tissue inside the oh, canal. So you can see that really the damage you see on the surface is nothing compared to what's actually brewing underneath. And what's brewing is, is quite a serious infection. So Saray has been very lucky that Chalk has picked up this problem early, got in there, and hopefully this will really be just a ticket for her. So what we're doing is we're actually also using bleach to clean out the canal. Yeah, a lot more black muck still coming out, so we sort of have to keep on going until we're getting nice, clean tooth. We're making pretty good progress here. We've almost managed to clean out this, this canal here, and once that's been done, the Dean's happy that it's, it's sterilised and, and totally clean of any debris or any infection, then we can start to fill it. The problem with these is that they don't manufacture them for tigers. They barely manufacture them for dogs. So we're going to have to get a little bit creative because we do need to get this little guy all the way down. And roll two of them together and now we've got an uber long one. Nice. Yeah. So we need to get into about here. Alright. Awesome!
So now we've cleaned out that canal, the purpose of this mixture here is to push in there and just like putty to fill in that gap. And that really gives the tooth strength but also prevents any infection from occurring from here. Once this is done, we seal it off and hopefully we're done. So this is the little cone that we have pre-measured. What we want to do is just coat it really nicely. Insert that in there. It's actually what's used in the center of golf balls, interestingly enough. She might be able to bounce a bit. <laughs> You're just really packing that in. Packing it as much as possible in there. This should be a one-off procedure. We don't have to come back and put Soraya through this again. So no stone has been left unturned here. Just everything has to be right. So we're preparing the cavity now just for, um, for filling, really. We do the filling in a couple of layers, and uh, it really is to increase the strength of the filling. That's as close to natural tooth as possible and can withstand the pressures that a tooth can take. All right, you can go ahead. It's now the last stage of the whole procedure, so once we're done here, her anaesthetic goes right up, get her as deep as possible, take her back to the enclosure and let her wake up. So, can we start yeah. moving? All right, Chris, there's, would you like to I can do about turn it. her up to five? Yep. Yeah. If you want to take Ooh, all of this uh, stuff off. So we're just going to roll it towards us as we started. Everyone's ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. nerve-wracking time because if she in the process of waking up starts to swallow a tongue then you can't go in there and move it because she's awake enough to do something about you. So I just normally stay here and watch her breathing and as soon as she starts to move her tongue and lift her head then we would normally go so she's not stimulated but of course a bit of a catch-22 if she started to obstruct now. This is I guess the third riskiest bit. <laughs> Soraya. Even after we've done so much, you just can't celebrate until she is totally awake, sitting up and looking alive because things can still go wrong right now. Hey, yeah, me, I know. It's all right. Here's a hey, girl. Hand. It's all right. It's okay, girl. It's all right. Weird, huh? Hmm? It's all right. Oh, it's always a worry, you know, like. It's just like your, your children or your parents or someone you know going to hospital and having to have an anaesthetic, you know? Oh, there we go. Looking good, team? Yeah. Well done, everybody. Yes. Fantastic, thank thanks you very much. much. Yeah, no worries, thank you. Well thank you. Done, Sarah. Good to have you involved. Well done, you, huh? Thank you so very much. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure anytime. And with that, it's over. It's a massive relief to everyone in that whole group because everyone had their job, everyone did their job. And we've got the result. Soraya will be so much happier with that tooth all fixed up. And thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sam. She's still a little bit woozy. I imagine when the local anaesthetic wears off, it might be slightly uncomfortable, but she's had a good dose of pain relief. She had a, an anti-inflammatory injection while she was under, so um, hopefully she'll be feeling really good and by tomorrow eating normally and all the rest. Oh, and Soraya, big hugs to Soraya. <laughs> Not sure who will make the quickest recovery, Soraya or Sal. They're her babies and because they're her babies, they get the best of care and hopefully today it's what we delivered. You love the show? Now check out a new experience at BondiVet.com. With trusted pet advice, expert vet help, products and entertaining content, we're here to help 24-7. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.